Service will come to order. sunrise service. You will find the history of this service at the back of the program. Also, the Earls Court Branch 65 Pipe Band are celebrating their 70th year of continuous service to the Royal Canadian Legion and the community. Joining us today, among with other dignitaries, we have our Ontario Provincial Command President, Comrade Comrade Andre Paquette and his wife Jane, and the District Commander, Comrade Peter Ganny. Now, at this time, we will have a few words from Heather, the manager of the Prospect Cemetery. All right, stand up! Veterans, ladies and gentlemen, children, good morning. On behalf of Prospect Cemetery, I extend a warm welcome and thank you for joining us. For the past 85 years, we have been honored at Prospect Cemetery to be a part of this service, and we feel privileged to have this veteran section dedicated to Canadian and Allied veterans in our cemetery. We believe a cemetery is much more than a burial place. It keeps precious memories alive and it makes sure that our children of tomorrow can become acquainted with their family and our country's history. As we remember and honor you and your fallen comrades for enduring hardship and fear so long ago, 
our thoughts and prayers are also with the many who are still fighting for freedom and democracy around the world. Without the strength and courage of our veterans, we would not be the country we are today. We owe you our tributes, our respect, and our gratitude. May God bless you. Thank you. We will now have our hymn, Faith of Our Fathers. unto this day of remembrance. It is with grateful hearts and minds, accompanied with thankfulness for the freedom we have to meet freely, to remember the sacrificial giving of our comrades in arms, those who faithfully served our country unto their deaths, those who suffered disablement, long-term injury, physically, emotionally, yes, we remember and we experience the freedom we have right now to meet unmolested by any authority in all of the conflicts, World War I, II, Korea, Afghanistan, our Canadian peacekeepers, all those who engage in dangerous areas of this world to be helpful to the people of other lands, we remember them. 
are remembering as individuals differ. Those of us who endured the conflicts see the faces, we hear the voices of those who so suddenly left us. We may be much more sentimental in our remembering our father. That's why old vets may shed tears in remembrance, but each in his or her, her own way are remembering the sacrifice of our heroes. Suit a blessing, Heavenly Father, for all those gathered here with the right motive, honoring those who gave them this freedom. We give thee our thanks on behalf of all here today. Our Almighty God, we thank thee. And for those of us who pray in Jesus' name, amen. We will now have the retiring of the old flag. On behalf of the Ladies Auxiliary of Court Branch 65, I'd like to present this flag for dedication. I have the dedication of the new flag, Dr. Norman Gunn. Dedication really means to set apart and consecrate to a holy purpose or to give oneself wholly to a worthy purpose. The flag is a standard, an ensign of colors or a banner of light material capable of being extended by the wind from a staff or pole to which it is usually attached. Flags can be used as a mark of distinction, rank, 
nationality and should convey a message to the units operating under it. The present Canadian national flag is not the one many of us older vets swore allergent allegiance to, but we would never let that old flag down. And we had a song, and it sang, when we were of low spirits, oh, we'll never let the old flag down fall, for we love it the best of all. We don't want to fight to show our might, but when we do, then we'll fight, fight, fight. In peace or war, you'll hear us sing, God save the flag, God save the king. At the end of the world, the flag's unfurled. No, we'll never let the old flag down. I pray that all of those who serve under the flag that you've just been presented will honor what it stands for, who it stands for, why it stands for, and do your duties as we did, never letting the flag down, the flag of our country. May God bless each and every one of you participating in this changeover. May we pray, Holy Father, Thou knowest the need in the each and every heart. Thou knowest that those who serve in the country of their origin do so, and they all go under one particular banner individually in that country. But Lord, for this here in Canada, may indeed they keep the banner flying high, salute it when needed, and dutifully carry out everything that's assigned them under that flag. Thank you for thy goodness to us in allowing us for this kind of transaction to put this new flag up. Amen. the dedication of the race.
Sometimes people ask, what are wreaths? Wreaths originally were called laurel or sweet bay and have a long and very interesting history. They are now to be presented and placed in memory of our fallen heroes. Those placing them are a cross-section of our citizens and we thank them for dutifully doing so. There can be artificial wreaths today but the real ones of centuries ago were native of Asia Minor, but now diffused in countries around the Mediterranean Sea in bushes 15 to 50 foot high. The ancient Greeks called it Daphne, and in their history it tells us that they, they or it were sacred to Apollo. Twigs bearing berries of it were wound around the foreheads of their heroes and poets. In later times, the degree of doctor was conferred with a ceremony and described as laureation. Today, the wreaths are placed to honor our heroic dead. Circular crowns or garlands of flowers and leaves entwined together. May each presenter recognize the symbolism of the presentation on behalf of all here today. And may some of us realize that the Lord Jesus Christ had a, placed on him by his enemies a wreath which was a crown of thorns and hammered it into his head. So Father, as we have spoken of the wreaths and the honors, we just thank thee that we have been freed from the barbarism of despotic rulers because of those to whom the wreaths are honoring. Thank you for that freedom. In Jesus' name, amen. Those who are laying a wreath today, will you please go where the wreaths are? And could you please wait until the platform officers get there to lay theirs first? Thank you.
have the last post. Norman Gunn, give us the address. Our daily bread for this day of remembrance. 
A writer, Bill Crowther's article entitled Faithful Unto Death. And in it he said, the Walker Art Gallery in Liverpool, England, there is a painting of a Roman soldier faithfully standing guard in ancient Pompeii. The painting was inspired by an archaeological discovery in Pompeii of an ashen encased Roman soldier in full military gear. The volcanic eruption of Mount Vesuvius in AD 79 covered the city in lava, capturing the people in their culture in a moment of time. The painting, Faithful Unto Death, is testimony to the soldier's continuing vigil, even as his world was being engulfed in fiery death. Certainly, many of our depart departed heroes had similar experiences and were faithful unto death. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, members of the forces gathered here at the cross of sacrifice memorial monument to our dead heroes are to be congratulated for your patriotic willingness to collectively come together with the dedicated group associated with the Earl Scort branch of the Royal Canadian Legion to honor the memories of Canada's fallen heroes. In all wars since Canada began, we take into account those injured physically, emotionally, the disabled not able to take care of themselves. They're suffering for our freedom. Their sacrifice of life for our lifestyles. Their demise and misery for our peace. So how are we faring since the armistice? What progress have we made and with the opportunities given us by their sacrificial efforts? Our principles of right conduct and tolerance need to be emphasized more than ever. The freedoms we have inherited from the deaths of our heroes have become license to too many shown by their erratic behavior in public. Our freedom gained was not cheap. Thousands of families suffered by losing their loved ones. Those patriots who knew love for their country and in loyalty died for it. Many of us are appalled by the criminal element, both in numbers and audacity, using the costly bought freedom by our war heroes as fair gain for their nefarious acts. I belong to an assembly of Christians who are red and yellow, black and white, and all are precious in God's sight. There is love and sharing and doing what is right. There is diligence, hard work. The newcomers as Christians want to be not only with us, but of us. Hence, we have harmony. To all of us, there has never been a time such as this when Canada needed our strengths our vigorous defense of our Canadian way of life and our culture. No, it's not perfect, for we are not perfect human beings. The erosion of standards of decency, the flippant talk of the taking of human life, when God in the Hebrew Christian Bible has sanctified life from the womb to the tomb, our laws are being eroded. Why should any outsider even think that they can have the laws to supersede ours or have parallel laws to please themselves? We have to wake up, protest that our heroes who sacrifice for our freedoms and way of life and also for those of us who survive. To keep our ways, our laws, our culture in respect to what they died for our glorious dead. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we would have this peace in our land. 
which our glorious dead purchased for us to bring about harmony, not only in our own country, but others seeking similar conditions of peace. Please grant us peaceful hearts and minds. We would have of the friendships and ask of thee to grant us friendly ways. May we have the kind of righteousness that comes from your guidance to measure our lives by thy will according to thy Holy Spirit inspired. indeed that thou would suit a blessing for all those who have come in such a way whether it was in clement weather or whether it was bright and sunny in their hearts and minds they knew that they had to pay respect for those who gave us this way of life father we can better it it's true so give us wisdom to advance our country not only in the world's eyes but we are gathered together in groups or individually, depending on our beliefs and reasons for partaking in the annual Remembrance Day celebration. We all have our personal reasons why we pay our respects on this very important day of the year. And quite possibly, I might add, one of the most important. For those who were a part of the fabric that made this country what it is today, they understand the need and the reasoning why we carry out this tradition every year. I do not believe that in lieu of the short time it takes to hold our individual services, that this tradition is too much to ask for when we consider how many have paid the supreme sacrifice so that we may live the free life we live today. Whether during wartime, peacetime, special duty time, or even as recently as Afghanistan, the loss of a comrade is the loss of a comrade is the loss of a comrade. On Remembrance Day, let us remember all those who have paid the supreme sacrifice, those we have lost since their return from faraway wars, and those who could not be with us today due to illness or too weak to attend outdoor services. For those who are with us, this day, see how they will stand tall and stand as tall as they can and proudly salute both queen and country. They carry a pride that may never be matched again. As members of the Royal Canadian Legion, this is the one tradition that must never cease. It is our duty that this tradition carries on with the respect and dignity it so rightly deserves. Thank you, my comrades, and may God bless. Thank you. On behalf of the members of the Royal Canadian Legion, Earth Court Branch 65, a special thanks to Dr. Norman Gunn, the bugler. We had a last minute change MSP South Belt, those who are attending to our national flag and the silent guard. Yeah, exactly. 